And Ms. Richens spoke directly to my next guest about the book and about her late husband before she was named as a suspect in his death. Dina Manzaras and Saray Shin are here and they're host of the show, Good Things Utah. Ladies, thank you both for joining me. You're so welcome. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Ladies, let's just jump into this because we all do this. I have to believe there's a part of you that's like, we did not want to be part of this story. You've un unintentionally become part of this story. Let me first get your reaction to the death penalty being taken off the table because I know you've been following this. Absolutely. I think it's one that I'm not surprised with. Um, I think that there is so much evidence against her and you could hear the proceedings in the courtroom and you could tell that all of this evidence against her, they were trying to save her life. And all of these testimonies about um, what she's done and uh, some of her history. So I think it wasn't a surprise when I heard prosecutors were not seeking the death penalty. So Rhea, even you in know, that, because you, you were following this, let me ask you that a quick follow up. It just came to me. When you heard her story, you had a chance to hear everything presented at trial. Did it garner a bit of sympathy for her after having met with her, spoke with her? Did you see things differently? It's interesting. I think that the opinion on it is always evolving as we learn more and we see more. But I will say that the Corey that sat down with us and what I took away from our interaction is very different than the Corey that shows up in court. We always mm. think about in terms of we're moms. She's a mom. She's got three small kids. We have small children, too. And so you were right when you started out with saying, did you want to be a part of this conversation. We always think about it. Uh, her kids will see this one day, but with them not seeking the death penalty as well, I wanted to chime in with, you know, they're already without their dad. And in some way, this does make sense so that they're not without both parents ultimately too. Dina Soraya, I want to listen to a part of your interview with Corey Richards. Let's take a listen. So my husband passed away unexpectedly last year. So it's March 4th was a one year anniversary for us. And um, he was 39. It completely took us all by shock. Um, and we have three little boys, 10, nine and six. You know, when you listen to that now, um, uh, Soraya, Dean, I have to ask, did, did you feel duped? Your interaction with her, did it feel off to you in any way? I think when we do this, we can kind of get a sense from a person, but sometimes people are really into it. You have no reason to suspect that this mom writing a children's book dealing with grief wasn't anything but genuine. Uh, did it set off any alarm bells? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's just astounding when you see and you do feel a bit duped when you hear the details. I mean, she knew that her home was searched. There was a search warrant. She was a prime suspect in the murder of her husband. And then you hear the proceedings in court of the details, multiple attempts to kill her husband with Moscow mules. And then knowing that the court documents all point to financial gain. Again, those details just make me a bit disgusted. And you do see the interview now and you go, okay, she wasn't emotional. And at the time I chalked that up to, well, her husband has only been gone for about a year. She might still be numb. Maybe this is how she's grieving. I can't judge how somebody else is grieving. But the interesting thing now, looking back on it, knowing you were a suspect, knowing you had been investigated for a year, even if allegedly, even if you didn't do it, wouldn't you be hiding out and laying low? You wouldn't be putting yourself in the public eye and coming on a local TV show. Dana, how much do you think, and, and, and again, uh, Soraya, please jump in here as well. I'm just throwing these questions out there because they come to mind when I sit here and talk to you. How much do you think this is all part of her strategy to help maybe, maybe paint a different picture and throw things off? I mean, for sure. Because I even asked her, I said, how were you able to process in a year's time, your husband, your loving husband that you paint in this picture, this picture book on grief dedicated to your husband and the father of your children? How have you been able to process all of this in a year, research how to write a book, then you say that you wrote the book with your three young children? And throughout this book, you have an angel figure of their dad throughout the storyline. And yes, I don't think it, 
I were in her position as a single mom of three young boys, I would be able to process all of that and to grieve at the same time and take care of three young children. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.